Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Brandon Clements and welcome back to another video here on Glass Hand. Today we're actually going to take this scene that I prepared and bring it into Deadline. So I'm just going to show you guys how to do Octane Render. This is the latest version, 2019.1. And we're going to use Deadline to split it up across all of our resources on the network. Um, so this is the video I've been wanting to do for a very long time. And I just now recently had gotten into the latest version of Octane. And I feel like there's a lot of great features on that. So if you guys want to see another video with Octane 2019.1 or 2019.2 features, comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, but today we're going to go ahead and jump in. So this is a uh, scene that I have just prepared. And if we open the Octane Live Viewer, I will show you how it's going to look. Actually, why don't I just place the animation in the video right here? Okay, so now that you've seen what the animation looks like, uh, definitely comment below and let me know if you guys want to see a breakdown of this scene. Uh, it's particularly interesting because there is a lot of fog in the scene. There's a lot of volumetric light. There's a lot of small, tiny lights. Uh, so if you guys want to see how to actually create this scene and how to optimize your render settings for Octane Render, let me know. You know, Give me a like on this video or comment below um, because I'm actually doing a lot more videos now since I'm in a new space. Uh, so I've got a house, I've got a home office, and I can start doing this stuff, so let me know what you guys want to see. Um, and also doing a lot more Unity programming and stuff like that too. So hopefully I'm going to have a variety of stuff on this channel. So if you go to File and you go to Export To and then run this animated package Orbix, uh, I'm going to go ahead and not click that. Um, what it will do is it will cache everything out for you. And the Orbix file type is really cool because it can contain textures, geometry, all your lighting, camera information. So it's like a, a scene description file, uh, but it also has a lot more uh, interesting use cases when you're going from a DCC into Octane Render. And uh, hopefully we'll see this, you know, adding new features in the future. Uh, so I think that this package is going to be great going into Unity or going into Unreal Engine. Hopefully it'll become more of a universal file type as we move forward. So once that is prepared, um, we'll go ahead and open Octane Standalone, and I'll show you what the Orbex looks like in there. So once you actually run that process, it will ask you if you, if you want to open it in Octane Standalone. So this will probably happen automatically for you guys, but uh, I'm going to go, go ahead and load my recent files here. And you can see uh, down below, it's actually loading in all the textures. And once that happens, we'll be able to see our scene fully in this node graph. So if you haven't used Octane Standalone before, it's actually really cool. It's something that I haven't featured on the channel just because we're using so much Cinema 4D to create our scenes and animations. But everything here is loaded into the scene graph. Uh, you can see all the geometry is here in this Alembic file. So everything that you're seeing in the scene outliner is actually all the different materials, uh, different properties that are happening in the scene. So, I had a few pieces of this back wall, and this isn't the actual back wall geometry, it's the back wall material, uh, along with all the other materials that are here. And if you come down to the bottom, you'll see this is the render target. So all of the different renders are present and available for us once you click this. And so the render port. So if we just give it a few seconds, you can see all the different statistics here. So we have the uh, out of core memory and we have the actual memory usage on the GPUs. We can see how many GPUs I have and if I roll my mouse uh, backwards it will actually control the camera so uh, what you would want to do is try to fit this to the scene um, window as, as best as you can. Uh, I believe you can tear this off and put it on to another monitor if you'd like but let's go down here to our render target settings and take a look at what we're going to be worried about when we actually send this off. Now, as I said before, um, or maybe I didn't mention, 2019.1 is, is a actual full release. There are some weird things that happen in it. Um, I have ran into some issues. One of the issues is um, when you come into the render passes here, sometimes randomly noise will just be checked. Uh, and I don't know why. Probably because of what I was doing inside of Cinema 4D and my optimization workflow, I was looking at a noise pass. Well, just be careful that that's not the only thing that's checked here. 
um, you can actually come here and say delete this node if you don't want any render passes. Um, but particularly what I want to talk about is the denoiser passes here. So I actually ran uh, the full denoiser on this image with only 1,500 samples, I believe. If we look at the sample count under the patch tracing kernel here, yeah, I only have 1,500 samples. So that's actually really cool um, that we're able to get that much quality out of just 1,500 samples. There's people who have done 50, 50 and 500 samples, uh, but this scene really needed a lot more computation time just to be able to figure out where all the lights were and to kind of alleviate a lot of noise to take all of that off of the denoiser. So if we look down below, I do not have adaptive sampling on um, only because I, I just wanted it to fire 1500 samples into the scene. I felt, I felt like 1500 was just uh, pretty low for this. Um, so I didn't actually turn on adaptive sampling. I just wanted it to clear the image as best that it could. And if we come down a little bit further, Something I'd like to do a video on in the future, I don't feel like it's quite there yet, is the upsampler. Um, this is actually really cool because what you can do is turn on upsampling. Right now the render target is at 1920 by 1080, but if you put it on 2x2, two two, it will actually uh, virtually like render it at a half a resolution, and then at the end of the rendering process, it will do an upscaling, which is really cool. It can save a lot of time if you're doing stills or extremely large renderings for print. Um, so, you know, that's really cool. And 4x4, of course, we'll do it in a quarter. So that's actually something I'd, li I'd like to take out a look at it in the future, but I don't feel like it's quite there yet. Um, and I do have the spectral AI denoiser on. So what this is doing is it is denoising the volume and uh, it's just actually a turning this on and making it available. There's another checkbox here that I want to show you guys. Uh, I believe it's under the camera imager. So um, if I keep going up, I do have AI lights on um, and emulate old volume behavior is turned off. Um, so there's been a lot of changes since the last time that I've made an Octane video. I think the last time I did an Octane video was like version four, but there's a lot of different things that Otoy have put into these uh, new releases, new features, all kinds of new things. So you actually want to turn that off so you can use the new volume behavior. I think that's all the callouts that I wanted to show you guys here. I'm trying to think if there was something else um, that I had done. You can see my render settings here. Um, I didn't want to do any kind of uh, caustic, so I went ahead and kind of blurred that out. My GI clamp is pretty heavy at two, um, so there's not a whole lot of um, you know GI computation. So if you actually hover over this, um, you can actually get a nice tool tip, which is really cool. So GI clamp reducing fireflies. That was one big thing because there's a, a lot of small light sources in here. And that's what the AI light is supposed to help with is uh, eliminating some of those fireflies that you would get with Octane. But I've also reduced the diffuse depth and the specular depth um, quite a bit. There isn't really any um, scattering that's hap happening in here. So that's kind of low. And the filter size is, is where it is by default. I also turned up the parallel samples. So if you hover over this, uh, specifies the number of samples that are run in parallel. Small number means less parallel samples and less memory usage, but potentially slower speed. A large number means more memory usage, but a potentially higher speed. So if you have a system that you're using that you believe you could spare some more memory to, I would go ahead and raise that number. Um, but other than that, pretty straightforward. So that's basically all we have to do to uh, make sure that our settings are correct here in Octane standalone. What I'm going to do now is just bring up the deadline monitor. So we just go ahead and bring that up real quick. So I'm gonna look for my deadline monitor and bring that up. And this is the actual submission process into deadline. And if you guys haven't used deadline before, um, look at my video using deadline and redshift. I believe I walked through a lot more of how to set it up. It's actually pretty straightforward. Um, if you haven't done any networking before, then, you know, I would definitely heavily rely on the documentation. And it looks like, oh, one sec. I do not have my Mongo database running. So this is another thing. Uh, it's just saying that it can't find the other computer that actually runs my database. One second, I'm actually going to turn that computer on. 
Wouldn't that have been cruel if I would have made you guys wait in real time while I actually started up and booted that computer? <laughs> okay, so I went ahead and hit OK. Um, I am going to point this to the path to the repository, which is on a NAS server that I have here in my office. So this should just work. Hit OK. And on my other display, it has now launched, and we are inside a deadline. So what we're going to do is going to go down to Submit 3D Octane. And we can name what the job is. So we can say, like, uh, I don't know, Tron 05. And then the Octane Scene. We want to make sure that this is saying Orbix. And we'll go ahead and select the latest. So this is what you would actually be working with in standalone. And if you made any changes in standalone, just hit Control S or File Save. This is the file that we are going to ship to the other computers. And we're just going to have an output folder. So, you know, wherever you want to save it, doesn't matter. Now, the big thing here is if you are splitting out render passes, what you want to do is use the file name template. So what I've done here is uh, percent sign capital F, which is frame number prefix with zeros. Now, this is kind of funky how I did this. So I would like to take the actual render pass name and I'm just cutting and pasting that in front. So it will say like denoise beauty underscore zero 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 one dot extension that's what this percent e stands for so these are like tokens um, that you can just put in you know variables essentially and i'm using a pretty relevant newer version of deadline so what they have here is um, one two three or four what this means is if you come up to super user mode go into configure plugins bring this window over here and go down all the way to Octane. So we're going to look for the Octane plugin. This is going to say, um, you know, what version of Octane are you using? One, two, three, or four. And this list here is what you're going to put the file path for all of your computers. So if you're using Windows machines, Macintosh machines, wh whatever it is, Linux, um, you're going to want to say deadline, look for this path here and then open the Octane client. And if you can't find the client, then open octane.exe. I, I like using the client because it just opens this command line. Um, it doesn't actually open the full uh, GUI and everything. It's actually a little bit, I, I think it's a little bit faster personally because it's just you know, running bare bones and it'll spit out the image. So I would say, you know, whatever version of Octane Render that you're using that you want to launch, go ahead and put it in this latest Octane 4 executable and then put the path to it. And make sure every single machine has the same path, path to this. And if a machine has a unique path, go ahead and list it here. And this will just say, if I can't find it, go to the next one. It's pretty straightforward. Um, but that's what you're going to want to use to actually submit for the version number. And then the actual format. So are you going to do 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, linear 32 EXR, linear 32 EXR tone mapped? Um, I would, you know, if you're going to go the whole 32-bit route, I would just do regular ES EXR. Um, or, you know, if you want to do the tone mapping, it's fine. The tone mapping should get you closer to what you have in the viewport. So if you don't want to do post, use the tone map. If you do want to you know, actually make a post look and you want to keep everything linear 32 bit, I would just do regular EXR. And then this is the name of the actual render target. So if we came down here, that's the name of this guy here. So it is named Tron 01 underscore. Um, I'm actually not sure where that name came from, <laughs> to be honest with you, but that is the name of the render target. So that's what you're going to want to say um, to actually render when it opens the command line or when it opens octane exe and it's funny because that's how it actually launches and renders when you open the software you have to click the render target so you need to do that here as well um, then list your frames and how many frames per task and i've only done one i haven't done anything crazy here there's also doing uh, gpu affinities and what gpu is going to do what task and you know that's that's a little more advanced and I wouldn't recommend it for, you know, just doing this for the first time. I would definitely explore it, read more of the documentation. Um, I've had minimal success with it with Octane, uh, just doing simple tests, going back and forth. But like I said, you know, 2019.1 is pretty much brand new right now. There's a ton of features that are supposed to be coming out for 2019.2.
So, you know, as they start adding more of these features and solidifying them, we can start submitting bug reports on the forums and um, hopefully, you know, Deadline or Octane Otoy will be aware of those issues and fix them in the, in a, at a later date. So, you know, that's basically what you have to do to submit it. And once that's going, you'll see uh, here are some of my render times. I, I thought this was actually pretty interesting. This was my first submission. And uh, I believe this is 192 frames. And this is without denoising. And you can see that it took 20 hours. Yeah, this took 20 hours. This was at a lower resolution with a high amount of samples. No denoising. Uh, this one was really long. This was one day, 21 hours. Uh, this was at like... I don't know, 7,000 samples or something. No denoising. And uh, then I did it again at 1920 by 1080. Um, I think it was like 3,000 samples. I don't remember. It wasn't 1,500. That was the lowest that I went. Um, but this was like 12 hours. So, you know, this is only running on three computers. So that's, let's see. I only have 10 980 Ti's hooked up right now. I have 16, um, but I haven't actually connected all the other computers yet at my at-home um, render farm. So I'm looking to upgrade a lot of this stuff as time goes on. But yeah, I mean, you know, using the Denoiser and Octane 2019.1 is pretty awesome. I'm actually super impressed with it. You know, I'll let you guys tell me what you think about it in the comment section below. Let me know if you like this video and what you want to see in the future. So if you have any questions with Deadline, definitely send me an email. Uh, everything, my social stuff is listed in the description box. So just hit me up if you guys have any questions. I'm sure I can answer them for you. I've ran into a lot of stuff with Deadline and uh, different DCCs and trying to utilize all the render resources that we have. So let me know. Thanks so much for watching this video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.